Well, hey everybody, thanks for joining me for today's video. Today, I have a question from a viewer who is the pastor of a small church, and he has a question about the leadership pipeline for small churches. Now, I, before I give you the question, I got to tell you, I love this. I love when small churches get a hold of the leadership pipeline. I was born and raised in West Virginia. I grew up in a little church between 50 to 70 in attendance, and I know the value of being developed in that little church. So uh, that's why I get excited about churches, smaller churches, uh, building out a leadership pipeline. Uh, I think it's valuable for several, several reasons. Number one, it enables them to scale their growth. Uh, one reason small churches don't grow is they don't have leaders. They don't develop leaders, so they can't scale their growth. They get limited from the lack of leadership. Second reason I get excited for small churches is when you have a leadership pipeline, you start developing people, you create more owners because you're empowering people to lead at higher levels of leadership. Uh, third reason I get excited about this is because I experienced this myself personally. When you have a leadership pipeline and you start to focus on leadership development in a small church, guess what? You're going to involve children and teenagers in the, the leadership development process. You're going to get kids serving. You're going to get teenagers serving. That's true of larger churches as well. But it's, I mean, it's almost mandatory in smaller churches. So in the little church I grew up in, I was serving by the time I was eight in different roles. I was teaching Sunday school by the time I was 13 and taking significant leadership roles as I grew as a, as a teenager. So I know the impact that it's had on me. And that's why I tried to get my kids involved in leadership early on in the church as well. So when you, uh, when you begin to think through leadership pipeline in a smaller church, make sure you're thinking, how can we utilize children and teenagers because it can have a long lasting impact on their lives. Uh, and the fourth reason I love that small churches think through the leadership pipeline is you build a vision in your people for multiplication. I really believe small churches can multiply other small churches. So, uh, hey, you might be a congregation of 50, 75, 90 to 100, something like that. There is no reason in the world you can't grow and, and uh, start another church or campus uh, miles down the road or in another little town down the road from you. Uh, it may take some time, but there's no reason you couldn't do it. And so uh, Leadership Pipeline will give you a vision for multiplication uh, of your church. Now, let me read this question and uh, I'll dive into the answer. I know people at level one of the pipeline are leading themselves and level two are the leaders in the church. You recommend a four to five level pipeline for small churches. Practically speaking, what do the upper levels look like in a small church? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this. I know he has 50 people that attend on a Sunday. So that tells me there's probably 60 to maybe 70 that are on that, that attend their church. He has one service. I looked up on his website and saw that. And he has four ministries, four ministries listed on their website. There's kids ministry, first impressions, life groups, and worship. Okay, so let me show you what this would look like in a small church. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here to the far left, and I'm going to determine the, the names of my levels. And so over here, this would be your team members, all right? These are people who are serving. And then this level, typically people call this uh, leaders. And then uh, sometimes people call this level coach. And then at the next level, is many people call that director. And then you got your, in this case, senior pastor uh, at this level. Okay. Now that gives me my levels. Now, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm going to recommend that, uh, that this church have four levels. So I'm going to blank this one out right here. I'm going to merge that. And this is for future growth. All right. So we're going to start in this church. We're going to have a senior pastor is, is going to be that top level. It's going to go straight down to coaches. He'll have coaches in these four ministry areas, and then he'll have leaders and then uh, team members. Let's, let's look at the numbers. All right. So in children's ministry, if there are 15 children attending, I'm going to make the assumption there are some in the nursery, some in preschool, and some in elementary. Now, we know that the average ratio 
in these classrooms, uh, you need one adult for every five children on average in children's ministry, but you have to have two people per classroom uh, for safety's sake. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to say uh, with, uh, I'm going to make the assumption there are three different classrooms. So each week, this pastor needs in children's ministry, three team members op operating on a weekly basis. And then I would recommend that they have six on the roster. Is that how you spell roster? All right. Now we go to the leader level. I'm going to want three room leaders. And again, these are probably going to be on a rotation. So hopefully you can recruit six leaders uh, to be on your, on your roster. All right. And then in kids ministry, I need one kids coach. That's what children's ministry would look like. So that's going to give them anywhere. Let's see. That's uh three to six, six, six to 12, about 13 people needed to uh, operate children's ministry. Now let's jump over to life groups. They have life groups. There's 50 people attending. Smaller churches tend to have a higher attendance of life groups. So I'm going to say they have 30 in attendance there. That uh, typically the ratio is one to 10 in attendance of uh, uh, one leader for every 10 uh, people in small groups. So I'm guessing they have three to four small group leaders in this church. And I would be looking for one life group coach to oversee uh, that ministry. Now let's go to the uh, first impressions. Now in this area there, we know that there are 50 people attending the church. Here's what you have to look for here. How many, uh, entrances do they have? Uh, do you have an external presence in the parking lot and an internal presence at your doors? Uh, that sort of thing. So let's say that they have two entrances and they do have a parking lot ministry. So here's what I would be looking for. I would be looking for uh, two people per week in the parking lot. All right, so parking team. And I would want about four on the roster. Then uh, I would, if I had two, two entrances, I would want two people at each entrance. So that means each week I would want four hosts at the doors and those can double as your ushers, uh, and that sort of thing. You can have anywhere from four and I would say up to six, cause you might have a reception desk or something like that. All right. Now at the leader level, most churches, what they would do is they would have somebody, you know, one coach that oversees this team. But here's what I recommend. You want, yes, you want one coach, but here's what you want to do. You want one to two, because you might be on a rotation. Uh, I would have host leaders, that's for the indoors. And then I would, I would have one to two uh, parking team uh, leaders. All right. And that's, again, they can rotate. So that gives you a, a good number of people serving there. What would that be? That's about uh, four to six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you know, 14, anywhere from 10 to 15 people or so there serving there. All right, now let's go to the worship team. On the worship team, again, small churches, it's going to be small. So uh, let's say that they have three on in the band. Uh, let's say that they have three people that are uh, vocalists. And they have three people that serve on the production team. All right. Now, here's what I would be looking for at this level. Again, most people go straight to that coach level, but don't do that. We got to we got to ask the question, how many worship leaders do we have? And so in this case, I would want, oh, goodness, I would want uh, at least two worship leaders. I wouldn't want just the worship uh, coach to be able to do it. I would want a couple other people that could lead in worship. And then I would want one uh, production leader, one to two. Let's, let's put one to two. Cause again, it might be, might be a rotation might be hard to find. So it might just, might just have one, but then you have your one worship coach. So that's what the numbers would look like. Now you have other ministries and um, you go, well, where do they fit? And then I'm going to show you that on this next chart. So if this is the numbers and if this makes sense, this is what the, I call this the defining levels worksheet. This is what this would look like. 
So in order for this church to function, they would need kids team members, kids room leaders, kids coach. They would need uh, life group participants, life group leaders, life group coach. Uh, for first impressions, they would have a host team and a parking team. They would have a host team leader and parking team leader and a first impressions coach. Worship area, they would have vocal team, band team, production team, worship leader, production leader, and a worship coach. So these are all the positions needed to run this area of ministry. Now, what you want to do is you want to have a job description for each one of these positions. Now, as I said, there are probably other positions, I'm sure there are, to help run this church. There might be a finance team. There might be deacons or elders. There might be people who take care of the grounds. Those don't need to be in the pipeline. These are things that support your leadership pipeline, so I put those to the side. You'll also notice here at that director level, I put uh, future directors for church growth or as it multiplies. And so um, this can be reserved for later. This is more of an aspirational role. In fact, this chart is built out in an aspirational way. You may not have all these positions, but this is what you aspire to, and that's what you want to work towards. Now, Senior pastor, what you want to do is you want to work with these four coaches. You want to work with them, through them, develop them, pour into them, do your leadership development with them, empower them to develop the leaders underneath them. That's going to keep all the people down here at the leader and team member level from running up here and asking you things. So as you lead these coaches or directors, you can call them coach or director, but as you lead them, what you want to do is you want to uh, elevate their visibility, their authority, and uh, champion their authority, their leadership role, and don't undermine it by becoming an answer man uh, to, to all these people. Make sure when people come to you, point them to their coach for their answers. So I hope that helps, uh, helps you understand leadership pipeline in a small church a little bit better. That's what it would look like in a very practical manner. If you have questions, please hit me up in the comments below. And thanks for watching today. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch uh, all the future videos that we release.